All right, guys, I was wrong. I'll be enough of a man to admit that. I'm a grown boy, okay? I got a couple hairs on my chest. I can admit when I was wrong. And I was wrong about this car right here. When I first started this channel, imports were lame. If you had one, you were possibly in the closet. Like, I, 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 was, I was just a hater. I was a hater. I was a young kid. I didn't know any better. And I've grown. I've grown over the years. And I've, I've finally realized what these people were saying all these years by, you don't need to have a fast car to have fun. I still think that statement is a little bit wrong, but this car... This car has managed to prove me otherwise. This beautiful gem has managed to prove me wrong, and I will admit that. This is mine and my girlfriend's 2018 Subaru WRX STI. For the most part, it's her daily and my daily, but she drives it a lot more than I do. And when I drive it though, I just can't help but to have fun in it. It's one of those cars where I always kind of imagined it being fun but i thought i would get bored of it i thought it would be like oh yeah i mean 300 horsepower like yeah it's, it's fun but this thing is just undeniably fun and the best part is it's fun straight out of the box right off of the factory line this is bone stock except for wheels and suspension it is bone stock i have not touched the motor at all and it still manages to make me smile and impresses me through canyons nonstop. So today I'm gonna explain why I was wrong about this car, every little thing that I do like, and a couple things that I don't like. There are a few of them. It's not perfect, but damn, it's a really good car right out of the box. So let's jump into it. All right, first things first, obviously mine doesn't look stock either. We have it wrapped in tiny bought vinyl Millennium Jade. My girlfriend picked out the color and I think she did a pretty good job. It's a nice color. Don't see Subies this color too often. I hadn't seen one until ours was done and now I see them everywhere, but I don't want to assume anything because I don't post this car anyways. <laughs> so anyways, we have a Viz Racing carbon fiber hood with a lot of heat extraction all over it one thing that this car can never get enough of is cooling it seems we're also on esr ap6s wrapped in falcon tires 265 squared so we have a squared setup obviously it is an all-wheel drive car so why wouldn't you have that we have a little aero package on it nothing crazy when we got this car it looked really underwhelming because it didn't come with a front lip so we put a front lip on a front splitter we have side skirts diffuser we just wanted to make it look a little bit better because it does kind of blend in with normal ass traffic. I mean, even with the big STI wing, it's still just like, it didn't have that like race car look, you know? And if I'm gonna rice out one car, it might as well be this one. So I'd consider this my most riced out car out of all of them. But for what it is, it is a very fun car. The interior, I think is one of the nicest interiors I own. I don't know how I didn't notice that Subaru had such nice interiors, but we got some nice Recaro seats, which do have seat warmers on them. We have a nice steering wheel with shifter in a great location. The dash and everything in here looks great as well. It's just like, it's a very modern looking car. It's not too overdone. Like you still feel some of the cheap materials here and there, but it's a very nice interior overall. The back seat also has plenty of room. It's a little messy because we've been taking our dog for trips and uh, we haven't really had time to clean it because he's still a puppy and he makes messes. He didn't pee or anything, which is great, but uh, it's a little dirty in here. His paws aren't always the cleanest, but the back seat has plenty of room if you do intend on actually carrying around people. It's actually functional. It's not like a BRZ where they're just there for show. It also came factory with big brakes all the way around, which is great. Although I'm not a major fan of the highlighter green factory color, that is what it came with, and I do not feel like pulling them apart and painting them, so I will leave it as so. Pretty much when we were shopping for another car, we were looking for a fun daily to replace the Honda Accord. The Honda Accord was a great daily, still one of my favorite cars I've ever owned, just for the simplicity and just the comfort level of what you get for how cheap they are. I think that was a great daily, but we wanted something a little bit more fun, something we can actually go take out to car meets, have some fun with, and not be embarrassed to drive. You can't pull up to a car meet in a Honda Accord. I'm sorry. I don't know what everyone else is telling you. I'm looking at you Accord owners. Can't do that. Although I will say, I have seen some pretty wicked Accords on Instagram, people beating Hellcats and shit. That's impressive. You could pull up. Just you guys know which ones I'm talking about. But yeah, this car seemed to check all the boxes. And so I wanted to wait some time before I made this video because when I first drove this car through a canyon, when we put on the coilovers and the wheels and tires, I was in love with it. I knew that I had something here that was really fun 
and I, I, I slept on it. I 100% slept on it, but I don't want to make that video. I don't want to rush into it because there are some issues, and I think I'll talk about the issues after the drive. So let's go ahead and let's go for a drive. All right, guys. So we're out driving the car, and it started to rain a little bit, and we have the dog in the car with us. But that is one of the, uh, the upsides of the car. Well, I guess two of them. One, you have cargo room in the back for dogs, kids, all that fun stuff. But two, weather isn't really an option in this car. I can't get in my Mustang, my Supra, and just go out and drive. I, I can't do that. Those cars are high horsepower, rear wheel drive cars, kind of on slicks. The Mustang is definitely on slicks, but the Supra is uh, its pretty much on slicks. This car, I can go out any weather and still have a decent amount of fun if I really wanted to. If I wanna be a maniac, and have some fun in the water, I could. Just gotta make sure I have the right tires for it. But that's honestly one of the upsides of this car that you just don't really understand until you drive it. It just feels so secure and confident inspiring that it just feels like you could toss it into a corner with little effort and you're just gonna power your way through it super easily. What do you think about that little puppy? What do you think about that little puppy? Go to the back. I'm not even in sport mode. This car has three modes and they're all very noticeable. I'm in just like the eco mode. I think they call it intelligent or some shit like that. There's sport and then there's sport sharp. And when I tell you sport sharp is as sharp as one would think sport sharp would be, it's pretty sharp. I honestly don't drive in sport sharp too much because it is so sensitive that it's low key kind of annoying. Sport is like the perfect balance, but like let me just show you something really quick because it is super noticeable Okay, so really quickly I just want to show you the difference in how the boost is applied in Sport sharp versus regular so I'm in sport sharp right now so you can see when I get on it It, it, it goes really quick now watch I'm gonna do like 50% throttle and look it just spikes Okay, now I'm gonna go into intelligent mode, which is the eco mode now watch 50% throttle And it's slowly going up and we were not even crossing over 10 it doesn't give you all the boost, it seems like, unless I'm wide open throttle. We'll go back to Sport Sharp and watch. Spikes instantly. Instantly. That's at 40% throttle. It's even less. That's what I mean. That mode is really, really torquey. All right. So I'm going to do this pull. It's actually on a, on a turn. And you guys will see just how nice this car is. I can't do this in any other car. Maybe my McLaren. But we're doing a 30 roll. gears not six obviously but i got into six on a turn full throttle sport sharp and it, I, it didn't feel sketchy at all i did let off on those little humps just because i'm not a fucking idiot i let off for a split second on the humps got right back into it and we just kept carrying the speed through the whole corner and i can't do that in any of my other cars like i said maybe the mclaren but not at full wide open throttle like this this is one of those cars where it's slow but it's fun to drive fast. And I, I don't want to be cringy and say that, that line that I, I really hate. I really hate when people say this shit. It's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. Who the fuck is driving a fast car slow? Why the fuck would you even do that? You're going to go buy a Lamborghini and drive it at 40 miles an hour? No, you're not. You're a fucking idiot if you're doing that. But that's my point. With this car, you can give it the beans the whole time. And it's fun. Super fun. All right. So I'll show you guys the POV of acceleration. It's nothing crazy, but look at wet floors, not even an issue. That was a bad downshift. Shut up. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing to be blown away by. Obviously, like, stock 5010 speeds are faster and everything like that, but... To be able to do that confidently in the rain, that's where I find it impressive. I, I, I doubt a Mustang will do that confidently in the rain. Wide open throttle, second gear pull, doubt it. All right, so we're gonna try to do a first gear pull right here. I'm waiting for this, uh, <clears throat> this road to be officially shut down so I can do it legally. Um, we're not gonna go too crazy. 
I, I'm not gonna try to break the speed limit, but I'll just accelerate in first gear in the rain. We'll see what it does. <laughs> books and books. She gone. This fucking truck wants to go around me. Oh, dude, you're trying to race me, bro? Bro, you're in a truck, okay? Go do truck things. You're not racing me. Get out of here. All right, now that we're back, let's continue the chat. Car performs great. I think out of the box, it's a very capable car. And my intention when we bought this car was to keep it, like I said, relatively stocked. I am looking at a Cobb Stage 2 Plus kit, which is pretty much just intake and fuel, and it'll bump up the power a bit, but it won't go ahead and make the car useless under its own power. What I mean by that is we're not taking away from the handling capabilities. We're not taking away from any of that. We're not overpowering the car. We're just gonna go ahead and make it a little bit more nimble and a little bit quicker on the straights because I really do want to track this car. I really do want to send it and I want to have some fun with it. And sadly, I haven't been able to yet, but I'm thinking really soon we will because I am really happy with how it is handling and performing right now. So why not go out and have some fun with it? We also have that renewable lubricants race oil in the engine. So why not go push it to its limits too? But let's talk about some of the cons. If I had to say some of the cons would be some of the cheaper interior pieces and even some of the exterior pieces, they just feel cheaper. The door panel is really thin and flimsy. It's not the best. It's actually broken too because it seems like someone put too much weight on it. I don't know, we bought it like that, but it's just, it seems like they did obviously cheap out in some areas, which is understandable because they focused more on performance. So I can 100% agree with why they did some things here and there, but you do notice it here and there. There are some rattles, there are some shakes, and for a 35 to $40,000 car, depending on when you bought it, you kind of expect it to be sound. I do think the car is beautiful. I think it is very aggressive looking, especially for it being a five-year-old car. I mean, I think it looks better than the newest generation. I guess we could have a debate on that in the comments down below. Let me know, would you guys prefer this generation or the newest fucking Aztec looking generation? <laughs> Comment down below. When done right, the new ones can look great, but I think this one, like I said, right out of the box, I think it beats it. Another con is obviously the power plant, the motor. The EJ25 is a good motor. It's a well-known motor. But the memes are true. I mean, they're not the most solid. It is a boxer engine. Maintenance is a bitch. So that's one of the things that really has deterred me from modifying this vehicle. It ain't gonna stop me though. Nothing will stop me. Couple other things that do bother me with the car. It has a very common issue, which is, I guess the power steering whining. It just, it sounds like I have a supercharger up front when I don't, and it'll happen at idle sometimes. It'll happen when I'm turning. It'll happen when I turn on the car and I go to turn the wheel. It doesn't really want to turn. It's a weird issue. And I actually did replace an O-ring and I put an extra clamp on a spot that looked like it was seeping a little bit. So we'll see if that fixes it. But I heard it today during our drive and it wasn't as bad as it was before, but, and now it's raining, it, but it is, it is there, it is an issue. And then I think the last issue that I'm having with the car is the reverse camera and lights don't always turn on. Sorry, it is raining, I gotta wrap this up pretty quick or move inside, but I will put it into reverse and it will do nothing. The lights won't turn on, the camera won't turn on, and it might be a switch on the transmission itself, but for me to access that, I have to either drop everything or I have to loosen up everything and let it dangle, which just for a switch, uh, I could just use the mirrors. You know, most of my cars don't have backup cams anyways, but it is a nice luxury that no longer really works, and my girlfriend definitely misses it. Uh, sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't, but it's really finicky and really annoying. Do I think that that outweighs the pros? By no means, it doesn't it doesn't even come close the pros of this car far outweigh any of the cons you can take this car in the rain like i did today and you can go have fun you can take this car through a canyon even if you're a rookie driver you can have some fun with this car in a canyon you can't do that with a mustang i mean you could try but we all know how that's going to end it's, it, it ain't going to end well this car is very confident inspiring and is one hell of a driver's car. And I was 100% wrong when I used to hate on them. I mean, I still hate on a lot of cars and I still will make fun of them for their, their issues and stuff like that because no car is perfect. I'll make fun of any car. I don't care what it is. But I, I genuinely didn't used to like these cars. And since then I have learned my lesson and I'm kind of curious what other cars I was wrong about. So if you think I'm wrong about any other cars, comment down below. Just don't say I'm wrong about Infinities because I know I'm not. I know, I. we all know those are garbage. But comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna go inside before it starts raining. Um, if I have any other post, post recording thoughts, I will throw them in right here. So the only thing that I forgot to mention was 
I stall in this car a lot. I'm I'm no rookie. I have stage three. I have twin discs. I have clutches rated for over a thousand horsepower. But for some reason, I stall in this car more than any car. And I'm I'm betting it's because it's an all-wheel drive platform. It takes a little bit more to get it going. But I just I pff, literally stall in this car probably once out of every ten goes. It's it's kind of embarrassing. My girl always laughs at me because she never stalls in this car. Uh, again, she probably just is used to it at this point, but I, that's the only other thing I can think of is uh, I'm an idiot and that probably doesn't mean anything to anyone else. But yeah, great car. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, let me know down below. Guys, go test drive a Subaru. If you are looking for a fun family car or fun daily driver, go test drive one. I can't talk on the fun or capabilities of the base WRX, but the STI is solid, fun, and great bang for your buck. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you. Subscribe, and until next video, peace.